The most reliable method for identifying interbreeding with archaic humans is by sequencing ancient DNA from their fossil remains and comparing it with the DNA of modern humans. This approach has been successfully applied to Neanderthal and Denisovan fossils, some dating back as far as 200,000 years in Eurasia. However, scientists have not yet managed to recover complete genomes from more ancient human ancestors. To overcome this, population geneticists have created statistical methods to detect unusually ancient DNA segments in the genomes of living individuals. The basal Eurasian population represents one of paleoanthropology's most intriguing genetic mysteries. This ancestral group diverged from other non-African populations approximately 45,000 to 60,000 years ago, significantly before the documented admixture between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Genetic analyses conducted by Lazaridis first identified this distinct ancestry component when examining ancient genomes from early Anatolian farmers. These farmers carried approximately 40 to 50% basal Eurasian ancestry, which subsequently spread throughout Europe during the Neolithic agricultural expansion. What makes basal Eurasians particularly significant is their complete lack of Neanderthal DNA, a striking contrast to all other Eurasian populations. Reich's lab at Harvard also demonstrated that basal Eurasians diverged from other human lineages before the introgression of Neanderthal DNA into the ancestors of all non-African populations. When basal Eurasians mixed with other early Eurasian groups, they effectively diluted the Neanderthal genetic signature, creating gradients of Neanderthal ancestry still observable in modern populations. With Southern Europeans showing systematically lower Neanderthal ancestry percentages than Northern Europeans, the basal Eurasian component appears most strongly in ancient DNA samples from the Near East and early European farmers, with decreasing proportions as one moves northward and westward across Europe. Recent studies identified approximately 35% basal Eurasian ancestry in pre-pottery Neolithic populations from the Levant, confirming their role as early carriers of this genetic component. Present-day Europeans derive approximately 13-40% to of their ancestry from basal Eurasians, with a north-south gradient. Despite its significant genomic footprint, the basal Eurasian population remains archaeologically unidentified. No skeletal remains have been conclusively linked to a pure basal Eurasian individual. This population exists solely in computational models, reconstructed from admixture graphs and analyses. Researchers speculate they may have inhabited regions of the Near East during the Upper Paleolithic, but confirmation awaits the discovery of unadmixed representatives of this lineage. This ghost population highlights the limitations of relying solely on archaeological remains for reconstructing human prehistory, as significant ancestral groups may leave genetic legacies without preservable material culture or identifiable morphological characteristics. Another fascinating case refers to the El Miron cave in Cantabria, Spain, which yielded remains of a woman dating to approximately 19,000 years ago representing the Magdalenian culture of the late Upper Paleolithic. Genome-wide analyses revealed a startling discovery. Despite belonging to a major European cultural complex, her genetic lineage does not persist substantially in later European populations. This finding contradicts earlier assumptions that Magdalenian hunter-gatherers directly contributed to the genetic makeup of subsequent European populations. The El Miron individual carried mitochondrial haplogroup U5b, common among European hunter-gatherers. But her autosomal DNA showed distinct patterns that failed to align neatly with later hunter-gatherer groups like the Villa Bruna cluster. Principal component analysis places her in a position intermediate between earlier Gravettian individuals and later Western European hunter-gatherers. The discontinuity suggests either a population replacement event or significant genetic restructuring across Europe following the last glacial maximum. Researchers have detected minor unexplained ancestry components in later European hunter-gatherers that may represent vestigial contributions from these ghost Magdalenian lineages. Researchers identified traces of genetic signatures similar to El Miron in some Mesolithic individuals from Portugal and northwestern Spain, suggesting limited survival of her lineage in isolated Iberian refugia. Following the last glacial maximum, a major demographic shift occurred across Europe potentially explaining the disappearance of the El Miron genetic signature. As ice sheets retreated northward, human populations expanded from southern refugia, potentially leading to competitive displacement or absorption of groups like those represented by El Miron.
Furthermore, genetic drift in small isolated populations may have further contributed to the loss of distinctive Magdalenian genetic markers. This case illustrates how even well-represented archaeological cultures can experience genetic discontinuity, highlighting the complex relationship between cultural traditions and biological populations. The El Miron woman stands as testimony to ghost lineages that once flourished in Paleolithic Europe, but left minimal genetic legacy in contemporary populations, challenging simplistic models of European population history and demonstrating how ancient DNA can reveal invisible population turnovers. The Gravettian and subsequent Epigravettian cultures, 35,000 to 15,000 years ago, represent crucial periods in European prehistory. Yet genetic analyses have revealed perplexing discontinuities that point to the existence of now-vanished populations. High-coverage genomes, sequenced from Kostenki and Goyat individuals dating to 35,000 to 30,000 years ago, exhibit genetic signatures not fully aligned with any later European hunter-gatherer groups. The Goyat Q1161 individual, dated to approximately 35,000 years ago, presents particularly puzzling genetic characteristics. Genomic analyses revealed this individual carried a minor but distinct East Asian-like ancestry component, not present in later European populations. Further analyses suggested approximately 6-8% to of genetic affinity with populations ancestral to present-day East Asians, a component that disappears from European genetic records shortly after this period. This signature may represent a now-extinct Eurasian population that briefly contributed to the European gene pool during the early Upper Paleolithic. Similarly, individuals from the Kostenki site in Russia belong to mitochondrial haplogroup U2, which became rare in later European populations, and show autosomal patterns distinct from both Western and Eastern hunter-gatherers, who would later dominate the European landscape. Recent analyses suggest these individuals may represent a lineage that contributed minimally to later Europeans, but potentially more significantly to populations in Western Asia. As mentioned earlier, these genetic gaps coincide with the last glacial maximum, a period of extremes that forced human populations into southern refugia. European genetic structure underwent dramatic reorganization after this period, with the emergence of the Villa Bruna genetic cluster that would form the basis for later Western European hunter-gatherers. The ancient North Eurasian genetic component represents a remarkable success story in paleogenomics, transforming from a hypothesized ghost population to a well-characterized ancestral lineage. This population was first detected indirectly through statistical signals in modern genomes, before being conclusively identified through the analysis of the Malta boy, remains from Lake Baikal, Siberia, dated to approximately 24,000 years ago. This discovery revealed a previously unknown third ancestral population contributing to modern Eurasians, alongside Western hunter-gatherers and Eastern hunter-gatherers. Genomic analyses demonstrate that ancient North Eurasian populations diverged from Western Eurasians approximately 38,000 to 45,000 years ago, but remained genetically distinct from both European and East Asian populations. They inhabited a vast territory across Northern Eurasia during the Upper Paleolithic, adapting to extreme cold environments. Additional ancient North Eurasian-related individuals have since been identified, including the Afontova Gora individuals from Siberia, approximately 17,000 years ago, and the Yana RHS site individuals, approximately 31,600 years ago, helping reconstruct this population's geographic and temporal range. The most substantial ancient North Eurasian genetic component appears in Native Americans, approximately 30 to 40 percent, representing a major ancestral source population alongside East Asian lineages. This admixture occurred approximately 20,000 to 25,000 years ago in northeastern Siberia, as demonstrated by analyses of Upper Paleolithic Siberian genomes from sites like Yana and Kolyma. In Europe, ancient North Eurasian ancestry arrived much later, primarily through the expansion of Yamnaya pastoralists from the Pontic Caspian steppe during the Early Bronze Age, approximately 5,000 years ago. Scientists demonstrated that these steppe populations carried approximately 30 to 50 percent ancient North Eurasian ancestry, which they subsequently introduced into European populations. The discovery of ancient North Eurasian ancestry is yet another example of how ancient DNA can transform our understanding of human prehistory. It also demonstrates the complex, web like nature of human population history, with populations once considered ghost lineages 
revealed as crucial contributors to modern genetic diversity. As discussed briefly earlier, the Bronze Age transformation of Europe's genetic landscape was primarily driven by migrations of pastoralist populations from the Eurasian steppe, particularly the Yamnaya cultural complex. However, detailed genetic analyses reveal that these eastern steppe populations themselves contained ancestry components from previously uncharacterized Siberian hunter-gatherer groups, creating another layer of ghost populations in European prehistory. However, more recent analyses using higher resolution methods have identified additional minor components not fully accounted for by known upper Paleolithic populations. Particularly significant are the contributions from pre-Botai populations of northern Kazakhstan and pre-Baikal populations from the Lake Baikal region. Genomic analyses has revealed that Botai hunter-gatherers possessed a distinctive genetic profile with both Aini-related ancestry and contributions from a more eastern Siberian source. This eastern component subsequently appeared, albeit in diluted form, in Yamnaya and later steppe populations that migrated into Europe. Y-chromosome haplogroup Q, predominantly associated with Siberian and Native American populations, appears sporadically in Bronze Age steppe samples, and at low frequencies in modern Eastern Europeans, potentially representing a genetic legacy of these steppe ghost populations. Similarly, specific mitochondrial haplogroups like C4 and G2A, typically associated with North Asian populations, occasionally appear in Bronze Age steppe samples that later contributed to European genetics. These minor Siberian components ultimately reached Europe through the multi-stage population movements of the Bronze Age, becoming progressively diluted through admixture with Western populations. Modern Europeans possess Neanderthal DNA comprising approximately 1.8 to 2.6% of their genomes, reflecting ancient interbreeding events. This Neanderthal genetic contribution is not distributed uniformly across modern European populations, creating a pattern that helps illuminate both ancient migration patterns and the influence of ghost populations in European prehistory. Current genomic research reveals a consistent north-south gradient in Neanderthal ancestry across Europe. Northern Europeans typically carry higher proportions of Neanderthal DNA, averaging 2.3 to 2.6%, compared to Southern Europeans, averaging 1.8 to 2.1%. This pattern was initially puzzling because Neanderthals inhabited Southern Europe for longer periods, which might suggest the opposite distribution. The explanation for this gradient emerged with the discovery of the basal Eurasian component in ancient DNA, functional Neanderthal variants affecting skin pigmentation, immunity and metabolism show different frequencies across European populations, correlating with latitude and historical population movements. Another fascinating example is of Denisovans, when we talk about Denisovan DNA in modern Europeans, we're really discussing a complex genetic story that stretches across tens of thousands of years. Even though the amount of Denisovan DNA in Europeans is quite small, only about 0.1% to 2%, on average, it carries a wealth of history about ancient interactions between archaic human species and early modern humans. The discovery of this genetic legacy wouldn't have been possible without some incredible advancements in paleogenomics. A major breakthrough came in 2010, when scientists sequenced the Neanderthal genome. Building on this knowledge, studies in later years used cutting-edge tools, like the SPRIME algorithm, to scan human genomes in greater detail. For example, a 2018 study found segments of Denisovan DNA in European populations, though the levels were modest, about 0.1% to 0.5% on average. By comparison, populations like the Melanesians showed much higher levels, around 4% to 6%, while East Asians carried about 0.2%. One particularly interesting finding came out of a 2023 study. Researchers identified a Denisovan-derived gene variant called ZNF558 in some Europeans. This gene seems to have played a role in adapting to cold environments and regulating zinc levels. While intriguing, it's important to note that this variant only accounts for an extremely tiny fraction of the European genome. But how, one might wonder, did Denisovan DNA even find its way into Europe in the first place? The answer involves a mix of migrations and interbreeding events that span thousands of years. For starters, Denisovans and Neanderthals themselves interbred in Siberia. Evidence for this comes from the genome of an Altai Neanderthal that lived roughly 90,000 years ago. This individual's DNA revealed a significant Denisovan contribution, about 17%. 
Since Neanderthals had mixed with Denisovans, some of these Denisovan genetic fragments came along. Migrations during the Bronze Age and the Neolithic period brought additional waves of Denisovan ancestry into Europe. For instance, steppe pastoralists, such as the Yamnaya culture, and Neolithic Anatolian farmers, whose ancestors had connections to Central Asia, carried small amounts of Denisovan DNA. Later, Indo-European migrations around 2000 to 1500 BC further mixed Denisovan DNA into the European gene pool, often coming through South Asian populations who had some of the highest diversity of Denisovan ancestry, around 0.2% to 0.5%. Interestingly, there are regional differences in Denisovan DNA levels. Icelanders, for example, seem to have slightly higher Denisovan ancestry, about 3.3%. This could come from a now extinct Western Eurasian Denisovan population that split off from other Denisovans roughly 200,000 years ago from the elusive basal Eurasians who contributed to European ancestry but whose physical remains we've never found, to the Neanderthals and Denisovans, who once walked the same lands and now live on in fragments of our genome. The picture is both incomplete and astonishing.